Good morning, everybody. MoonFan2002 here, and welcome to October. And despite not starting off, like, somewhat good-ish, um, that's not what we're going to be talking about. What we're going to be talking about is obviously, of course, the September movies that I saw and will be giving you guys, like, in somewhat mini-reviews. I was going to do these, like, big reviews, especially, like, I kind of regret I'm not doing them, but I think I sh still want to talk about them anyway. All right, so let's... Let's begin, and let's start off with Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Now, believe it or not, um, I actually actually had to watch, I actually watched the first movie for the first time before seeing this one. Yeah, I know, I went for like nearly 22 years of my life without seeing this one. Crazy, right? Well, the good news is, I thankfully enjoyed the first Beetlejuice, and I was hope, and thankfully the good news is, it's the same here. Okay, sure, yes, it's not like that spectacular, as I will admit, it did have some issues, like, I'm gonna be honest here, and... I think I might be in the minority, but Catherine O'Hara was really irritating in this movie. I mean, good lord. I, I love you, Catherine O'Hara. I think you're a really funny actress, but Jesus, you really you took it way too far with your constant joke throughout the movie. Like, jeez, says woman, I get it. Just, oh god. It feels, it feels like, an only, like a joke that, that like goes on for an eternity, and it, and it doesn't get the people laughing. It's just dead... It glares, despite the fact that my theater was laughing at it. And I was like, why? That, and also, I will admit, like, there were some moments that did feel like they were copying a bit of the original. Although, I do understand why my, it is a sequel released 36 years later afterwards. And in some circumstances, I will allow it. There's also this, some moments that, like, went on, like, way too quickly. Despite the, which is why the movie should have been a bit longer. I mean, this movie's only 1 hour and 44 minutes. And really, it's, the, it's way too short. Okay, but now for the positives, as there's thankfully a lot of good s stuff I liked about it. First off, uh, first off, like, the, the acting was great from everybody, especially from Michael Keaton as, as Beetlejuice, and thankfully he still nails it in the role. In fact, he, he nails it so well that it, it honestly looks like he didn't age a day. He still has, he still got it after all these years. The effects look amazing, and there are a lot more practical effects than CGI, even though some of them do look more stop-motion-esque, which... Which also which works with Burton's style pretty well. Um, the story was engaging for the most part. Um, it had there were a lot of great jokes throughout the movie again from Michael Keaton, and also it just helped to like get ready for the holiday season. I also really think, plus also they got Jenny Ortega from from Wednesday to be in this. That's that's also awesome. Yeah, awesome. And I just and just yeah, I just had a good time. I'm doing and so it's just a great movie. Although the series was, although the animated series and Broadway show was lying about, about Lydia and Bill just being friends, yeah, I think we can say that those shows are not canon, despite the fact that Burton were, were was a part of them. But yeah, so really, really entertaining movie. I wanted to get you into the Halloween spirit, even though I feel like it should have came out this month instead. But oh well, what you gonna do? All right, okay, I just wanted to get that out of the way before I talk about like the true main courses of this month. That being the two animated films that I saw. And my god, oh man. I'll try not to go too much into detail about them, but I still want to give you guys my thoughts on them. First off is Transformers 1. Now, like I said in my, my review, I was originally going to see this movie like the night afterwards it came out. But then when I got my, my call, like, the call about like the fact that I wasn't able to go into work that day. Just after feeling a little bit frustrated, I realized, hey, I could see Transformers 1 early. Let's do that. And... And what do you know? I did. And let me just say, I had a fantastic time watching the film. I was damn imp impressed. Because, like, holy shit. This was way better than expected. Because, like, going by the trailers, you think this was just going to be some fun, silly movie. Although, to be fair, um, that was mainly of the first trailer. Although, I do understand what they were doing with that first trailer. Because they didn't want to spoil much of it. But, seriously. That person needs to be fired. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe that's a bit too harsh. But, or at least not be in the trailer marketing department because that's not how you should market a movie. <sighs> Which I guess can explain why the film's not doing so well at the box office, but we're not gonna go there right now. Anyways, Transformers 1. This film is was really fantastic. I was not expecting this movie to be that dang good. And and although that the movie does have more of some of that fun eh, that some of that fun side to it like the first trailer did show, it was it worked much better here. And to be fair, that was only for the first half of the movie. Cause like the first half of the film is more of the, is more of like getting to know like Optimus Prime, Me Optimus Prime and Megatron, or should I say Orion Pax and D16, when they were, 
when they were once good friends. And it works very well, well during the first half of the movie. And you get to see them, like, bond as, like bond and go... And just get into all the crazy shenanigans they get up and when trying to prove themselves. But then, of course, when they go to the surface, they then meet Alpha Trion. And, and along with Alita and, and B-16. And that's when the tone shifts. And things become much more, more intense. And, oh my god, it just works so well. And it has you engaged, like, with with a fantastic story. The animation is just amazing. And considering it's done by the by the same guys who did Industrial Lights and Magic, it looks fantastic. And unlike the and unlike the live action films, they actually they make them look closer to their to their original counterparts from from the older generations. And, and it looks very well. Plus, the transformation scenes are a lot more simpler this time around, and not too like high tech where you're seeing like everything coming coming out like in the Michael Bay films. Oh, and the action is gets much more intense as it keeps going. Like, it starts off like fun at first with the racing scene, but as the movie keeps going, and once the tone shifts, it becomes much more intense and much more brutal, especially, especially during the final act of the movie. The villains were also really good, although I don't want to spoil who it is. When this guy showed up, I wasn't surprised of who... It was like, yeah, this guy is the villain, especially that, like, this guy was also in one of the previous Michael Bay... Th Michael Bay... Transformers films. And before you guys ask, no, this is not canon to any of the Michael Bay movies. This is its own separate universe. In fact, I think all the, tra in fact, every Transformers franchise are, despite this being another movie under Paramount's belt. The voice acting in this movie was also made, was also fantastic. I mean, I mean, sure, Keegan Michael Key might be the only like standout, mainly because like he does sound more like himself, but if, but everyone else still did a great job. Especially Brian Tyree Henry as D16 slash Megatron. Holy fucking shit. He gave such an awesome performance in the film. And he delivered it very well. And speaking of which, that's probably the, the strongest asset of the feature. The friendship, then the tragic friendship of of Optimus, Pro, of Orion Pax and D16. Them going from, at the beginning, they're like best of friends. Like willing to do everything for them. But then once they learn about the truth... It gets really heart wrenching, and once they have their fall, it's damn tragic. Some people have been comparing this film to The Prince of Egypt, and while I do, do under, and while I do see some similarities, I also would see that this has a bit of comparisons to, um, comparisons to X Men First Class, considering that this is the prequels of how like two characters become like who they are originally meant to be. I, I would love to say more, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone, especially for those who, especially for the countries that have yet to see the film. And seriously, I hope this movie does well, well when it opens in more markets. Because if it does, then please, we need a sequel to this. Especially that, I mean, yes, this movie has a budget of $75 million, but it's rumored to have a much bigger budget, like in between $75 and $147 million. And I really hope it makes its budget, because because Josh Cooley does have plans, is, like have plans out for like the other sequels, and I hope it does happen. But still, though, this was still a really good movie. And finally... On my birthday, I went to go see the latest film from DreamWorks Animation, The Wild Robot. And oh my god, I was not ready for how emotional this film was going to be. I mean, I mean, when I heard critics raving this film, I mean, I was excited, but then once I saw Transformers 1, I was like, this isn't going to be as good as Transformers 1. <laughs> no, oh, it's not going to. We'll have to wait and see. Then I saw the movie and... It was as, it was, it was better than I expected it. Like, wow. I mean, wow. I mean, this, I don't know. I don't know if it's too soon for me to say it, but fuck it. This is possibly the greatest film from DreamWorks Animation. I'm serious. It was that dang good. It had an emotional, emotionally gripping story that was simple but still emotional at the same time beautiful animation that mixes 2d and 3d animation um a tone that actually feels more like like a classic disney than a dreamworks film <laughs> a huh, incredible voice acting from the cast which makes the makes the whole reason with the animals talking to not be not feel jarring and actually feel more sincere and besides it actually was based off a book so it, well, that way and a cast of characters that you actually can feel for despite even if the main character of the film is a robot hell the robot doesn't even ha have like a face outside of, doesn't really have like a mouth on its face so like you and yet you can still f 
feel the emotion since that he's going through through Lupita Nyong'o's performance. But I think what truly made the film for me is that, well, it made me realize like how far I've come in life and it also gave me another value to respect my parents. There have been some times lately that have been kind of rough and yet this movie really helped and yet this movie made me appreciate those good, made me appreciate good moments. Especially when I let the film reflect on me. Yeah, I don't really have that much to add without spoiling it. Because, like, this is such, such a great movie. Yeah. Ah, yes. Uh, the ratings. For Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I'll give the film a 9 out of 10. At least in my opinion. But, but as for Transformers 1 and The Wild Robot, they're both getting a 10 out of 10. I love them both so much. So that's gonna do it for my September, for my September movie reviews. Thank you all so much for watching. Comment down below and let me know what what you guys saw about these films and what movies, what, what move, new releases you guys saw in September. Stay tuned. I got some more videos coming, your, coming your way. And until next time, peace and take care.